So unit economics is basically that on a, on a unit basis, how much money do you make? You know, there are two components to it that are very important. The lifetime value as well as the acquisition cost of that unit. So let's say in most cases it's a customer. So on a customer basis, how much money or gross profit you're going to make from that customer over that customer's lifetime with you on one hand and on the other hand, what does it cost for you to acquire that customer? For example, if you are selling a product, subtract all the costs that are associated to actually deliver that product to the customer, including the cost of the product itself, whatever is your profit from the customer. You have to look at that on one side and look at what the cost of customer acquisition on the one side. And if one is greater than the other, you know it's a scalable business. And it's much easier to raise funds, it's much easier to grow that business into a sustainable business, right? So you can think about it like, okay, if I make $20 from $10 that I'm spending, then I have a money-making machine effectively, and now I can scale that. I can fuel that by a billion dollars tomorrow, potentially, and make $2 billion out of that. If you see that the unit economics are not favorable, that is your cumulative lifetime value is far lesser than your customer acquisition cost, then you know that you're just going to end up burning money. So in terms of plain mathematics, the, the, the equation that would emerge is, you know, the total revenue obtained from a customer multiplied by the amount of times the customer will repeat with you minus the total cost of actually servicing the customer. So the way to increase the cumulative lifetime value is simply by either increasing the number of times the customer is going to buy from you or by increasing the profit margin you get from each, each product that you sell. You know, so, you know, so for example, in Healthify's case, you know, we were, uh, when we started the company, you know, the number of clients per coach that we were able to handle because we didn't have sophisticated tech and AI was about 40 or 50 clients per coach. So our gross profits were around 30-40%. So for $100 we would get, the company would only make $30. But because of the AI involvement and a lot of the efficiencies that we drove on software, both for the coaches as well as for the clients, we were able to get it up to 70%. So now, uh, you know, each coach can handle more than 200 clients and it's continued to improve. So with a 70-75% gross profit, it's starting to become like a SaaS business. You are having to spend a lot of money to acquire your customers. Uh, you know, you need to be able to increase the number of customers that are coming from word of mouth because you don't have to spend money to acquire those customers. You can also optimize your marketing significantly. So, you know, you can only, you can try and experiment with various digital marketing campaigns to only figure out which kind of campaigns work for you for what kind of customers and double down on those campaigns. So, you know, or in certain products, you can focus on conversion rates. So, you know, if you're having certain number of people who are landing on your website or landing in your store or landing in your calls as leads, how can you make sure that you have very high conversion rates so that, you know, if you have, if you have 50% conversion rates means one in two you're converting. So your CAC on the actual person will be very low even if it was very expensive for you to drive that customer through the door. Uh, but if you're converting only one in a hundred, then you need to drive a lot of people through the door to convert. To recap, increase the number of organic customers, try referral networks and optimize on marketing spends. And finally, look at the conversion rates if they are applicable in your business. My personal view is absolutely, you should calculate unit economics for each product and each service in your business separately to the extent you best can. Because that talks to you about the health of that particular business unit and that particular product line within that business unit. You know, in Health of Family's case, we have price points at different products. We've got our essentials plan, balance plan, transform plan, ultimate plan. We have do-it-yourself smart plans. And each of them come with very different cost offerings. Some have variables, some don't have variables, but have multiple coaches. Some have only a single coach. Some have no coaches, but have just a, our AI software called RIA. So, you know, it, it totally depends. Each of them have to make a very different amount of money to be able to cover their costs. 